Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good middle of the night. How do you solve an equation like this? It's quadratic. What's the first step? You got it. We need to bring this term to the left-hand side. When I bring this term to the left-hand side, what does it become? Negative, right? So I, if I just change that equal sign to a minus sign, What's left on the right-hand side? Zero, no, guess again. Big fat zero. Have a look at this jersey. Which professional team has this jersey? It's pretty obscure. It's the Ottawa Senators in the NHL, the National Hockey League. What team would call themselves the big fat zeros. I can see 49ers, but even that's less than 50%. Better yet would be the 76ers. But why wouldn't a, just, a team just call themselves the ones, as in we won, because one is 100%, the best team ever. <laughs> okay, what did the big fat zero say to the slender eight? Great ideas. Why the big fat zero said, nice belt. <laughs> okay, back to the equation. How do you solve it? Well, if you want to perform an elegant solution, you should factor it. However, when you see all those crazy decimals, chances of factoring are pretty slim. I want you to try that for homework though. The lazy man's method is to use the quadratic formula, which you probably have seen before. If we define this number to be A, this number to be B, and this number to be C, then the solutions to that equation, of which there might be 2, 1, or even none, is given by x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. If b squared minus 4ac is 0, you get one solution. You could just get negative b over 2a because that disappears. If it's positive, you get two solutions because you can take the square root of a positive number. You get plus or minus that number along with the rest. But if it's negative, you can't take the square root of a negative number unless you consider imaginary numbers. So then you say there's no solution. However, there's also the brute force and ignorance method where you just guess numbers that satisfy that equation. And believe it or not, if you do guess, you will get x equals 1 as a solution. Plug in 1, prove to yourself that it works. You'll also get, believe it or not, 2. Whoa! There's another proof, which I didn't expect, of 1 equals 2. So once again, we can say, QED, the big fat check mark, or better yet, smiley face. 1 equals 2 comes up all over the place. So what do those solutions mean? Well, it means that x minus 1 is a factor of this equation. x minus 2 is another factor of that equation, which of course equals, you guessed it by now, big fat 0. But what's the number in front? Well, that would just be the a value, negative 76, negative 764.92. Because if you multiply this out, you're going to get, first of all, x times x, x squared, times that number. It's got to give you this term, so that number's the same as this one. By the way, this number can be factored in a number of different ways. One way I factored it was negative 13.6 times 47.8 times the remaining factors, x minus 1, x minus 2, equals 0. But those factors are irrelevant because only this can make it 0 and that can make it 0. That's where we ended up with 1 equals 2 for the fourth or fifth time, I believe. Um, so if you want to factor this in a different method, you can. For homework again, I want you to multiply this out. 
make sure you get this equation so that everything checks. All right, please let me know where you live. I'm always interested in that. Comment, like, share. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do that as well. See you next time. Bye-bye.